actually what the show is. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne and Garth in there. Yeah, dude. Camera one, camera two. I always think of that. Like, this show kind of reminds me of, like, um, at least in my mind, like, for people. It, it started off, like, there was a lot more, like, smoking pot and stuff on the show originally. But it's, like, some mix between, like, Wayne's World and, like, that 70s show where you're just sitting around the circle and yeah. you're kind of just hanging out and you're talking. Because that was, like, my favorite times. Can I get you to have Mike a little bit closer if you don't care? There oh, you go. yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you're good. We're live. Oh, are we? Yeah. Uh, no, okay. we're back on. <laughs> oh, we're back. No, and we're back. We're back. Uh, Thanks for coming. Um, but I wanted to get into, in this, in this, uh, in this last half hour here, I want to get into... Um, Obviously, like the Bob and Tom show, that 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 made. Do you think that's one of the things that made you huge, or like what kind of like? Let's go back on your career, talk a little bit about that, and also talk about kind of where things went wrong and how you. Uh, let's talk about where you are now. And oh, I think those, yeah. I think that's. I think those are good. I think that's a good series of events that we can kind of get into. Sure. Um, well, now you're gonna make. Now you're gonna make me uh, probably get uh, arrested. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did you do, dude? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna violate my probation right now. Oh, for uh, talking, for talking about. Oh, I'm stories just kidding. No, yeah, I mean, it, who knows? I don't. I yeah, doubt yeah, my probation officer is listening to this podcast right now. This was long ago, many years ago. Yeah. I mean, um, the Bob and Tom Show is uh, uh, is w it, or was a a big um, a milestone for my career. Like once I actually, the first time I went on the Bob and Tom show, I did not do well and th they didn't uh, want me back. And then um, I was working at a comedy club in, in Indianapolis called crackers. And, and the uh, manager said, look, he was just having a, he was having a rough time. And so, they decided to have me back, and I went on and murdered. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Shout out to Facebook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I murdered it, man. I crushed it. No, um, but I, I did really well, and, and they had me on a short list of comics that were, like, up and coming, and, um, and it, was a, it, it was a big break for me. Um, and uh they had millions of listeners right at that time yeah and it's it's radio much like podcasts that we're doing right now is an odd thing because it's um it's 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 a it's er, especially early morning radio like you show up at the bob and tom show at like five o'clock in the morning and it's like really hard to be funny at seven o'clock in the morning i mean like it's just really weird, especially when you haven't slept. I mean, I went in there one time, like, all fucked up on cocaine and shit like that. Like, I mean, just, <laughs> but, but did well. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, but it's just a, it's just a weird time f to be funny. Like, dude, there's no effing way I could do this show at seven in the morning, you know? Like, what, what? Yeah, like right now, it's like, what? It's, it's, 4 30 p.m yeah wherever. which is still too early it's way too early yeah you know yeah, exactly. the sun is out and like i don't know like for some reason when the sun goes down the moon comes up people are laid they get in a different um mode i guess or whatever yeah. like, as you far get, as you loo you're loose yes yeah and um i uh that's where i met uh Donnie Baker, Ron Sexton, um, was the Bob and Tom show. And he, unfortunately, I, I, it's kind of hard for me to get into this because he was a very good friend of mine, but he passed away just a couple of nights ago, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. I was at know. the Funny Bone. See, I had actually never met him. Um, I, had, I had done some work with Jay Snyder. And he had told me he was like, "Hey, man, funny I, guy, one, one of the one of the, one best, of the best comics one of I've the ever best. worked with." Shout out to Jay Snyder. He was actually uh, gonna come on the show yesterday, but since they had canceled the shows, he had sure. to head, he he headed back home. So uh, we didn't end up getting to do the podcast, but um, he is coming back to talk with me. But 
so he's like, hey, man, why don't you come to the Funny Bone? I'll, uh, I'll vouch for you. I'll tell Donnie, like, you're going to do a guest set. Uh, I'll ask him if you can do a guest set. And so he hooked me up with it, man, and everything was good to go. And then uh, I got to the Funny Bone like an hour early to set up my cameras because I was filming for Jay. And uh, then he texted me, and he was like, hey, no guest set tonight, but you're going to be hosting. And so that's all I knew. And he was like, I'll tell you more when I get there. Yeah. And so I didn't actually know anything. Um, no one actually told me anything, man. I just knew that uh, that Donnie wasn't coming. That's all they said. And so we were, we, everything was good, but the customers and the Funny Bone didn't actually know. So it was like 170, 175 people. And um, like as I'm going up on stage, they're doing the offstage announcements. And they're like, Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, Donnie Baker's not going to make it tonight. Um, you're going to get a refund, uh, but and you guys can also stay for this other show that we have. And now introducing your host. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I got th- I felt like I got thrown to the wolves, man. Like the they were they were already booing the off stage announcements that he wasn't there, right? People were really upset. Obviously, no one knew what happened yet. Even me going up on stage. Oh, so sure. It was like in that. Dude, yeah, it was just rough, man. It was a rough situation, and I think everybody was like super. It's shocking, man, because I'm upset. I'm close to his age. He was 52, I'm 50, and it's like, you know, I'm at heart attack age. You yeah. know, that's I'm at that age where, if I died, people really probably wouldn't be shocked. They'd be like, of course, yeah, Kenny Smith died. Oh my god. You know, it it would be like Kenny Smith died. Yeah, of course he died. I mean, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the that's guy, such a subtle difference, but it's there. yeah, no. But I mean, it's, yeah. and I'm not. I'm. It means you know, yeah. But uh, he <laughs> he was so undercover that I opened up for him. Um. Donnie Baker, you know, and I, I remember going up to him and I was like, Hey man, I'm, how you doing? My name's Kenny Smith. And he takes his wig off and he's like, Kenny Smith, you fucking stoner. You know, like it's me, Ron Sexton. Like I opened up for you at crackers years ago. I was like, Holy shit. That's wild. Dude. I know. I mean, it, it was, he was so like under the radar, like, he was able to just own these characters and I did not know that he was the, you know. So were there other characters? Because I don't know his, like, his act that well. Or yeah, he at did least a few the characters day. on the Bob and Tom show. I mean, um, I don't remember their names or whatever, but I mean, he did all, he, he was on the Bob and Tom show all the time. And just such a, uh, such a nice guy and professional and uh, a, a terrible loss. I mean, I cried all day yesterday, man. I'm not going to lie. You know? Yeah, sad day for comedy, man. And, you know, for his family, too. But it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's unfortunate. But at the same time, you know, I, I kind of, I hate to say this, but I kind of envy Ron Sexton because he got out on top, you know. There's nothing worse than seeing like an old comic still scraping by in their fucking sixties or seventies, you know, dicking away at this shit. Like, I mean, he fucking made his millions of dollars and cashed out, you know. I know it sounds terrible to say, but um That's an interesting take. I mean it it, it really is. I mean I'm I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to uh, negate the fact that I mean that he's gone. I mean it's it's a horrible, terrible thing. But man, it's it's comedy is a fucking rough. Uh, it's 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 a it's just a very rough thing to do, you know. Especially if you have a family, you have, you're away from your family a lot, and all the just, time. Yeah. Yes. It's like being and, in the military, but you're not like no one respects you. You know, it's a, it's a, and it, yeah, it's a, it's a lonely, it's a very uh, depressing thing. Like a lot of people think that uh, comedy is all fun, and 
and it can be fun, but it's like there's a lot of alone time, man, where you think to yourself mm -hmm. in a Hampton Inn, you know, in the middle of fucking nowhere, and you're just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's a lot of just waiting to go on stage, right? You a lot know, of downtime. Yeah, a lot of downtime, but people don't realize that there is. But um, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, take the show on a, on a lower note so let's uh no but yeah let's I, make fun of fat people yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but no i that is uh yeah rest in peace uh, yeah to to ron sexton uh absolutely that's a sad sad day for comedy but let's let's just talk let's steer this more towards uh kind of what happened with you coming up like you were so you yeah were, i, I you was were this young guy you are you from ohio originally i am dayton? uh was born in columbus and raised in dayton ohio so what's the trajectory i, I started from? comedy okay uh my high school talent show 1991 i did a stand-up set i had a broken arm with a purple cast and i did five minutes and i made fun of our principal and you know, detention and school and all this kind of stuff. I made fun of all the teachers for like f five minutes. And let me tell you, I murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> so, up. Dude. I know. I have to That's keep calling. <laughs> I have to keep calling it back. Um, it's so stupid. I know. You didn't fucking murder. All right. No one murders. Okay. <laughs> Stop it with the fucking murdering and the I killed it and all this fucking horse shit. You know, so you killed it. You're a step above a fucking ventriloquist, okay? So you were like, so yeah, stop it. Yeah, stand up. Yeah. There's no, you're saying there's not enough glory in stand up to be talking like that. That's uh, what it's you're fucking stupid, man. Yeah, it I sounds fucking gay. I and think that you say a lot of fucked up shit, but you're just like being oh, honest, of course, yeah. and people don't really know how to take you. And I, I, I know that. I'm a fucking dick. I, I'll admit, yeah, I'm you're a fucking kind of prick. A dick, dude. I am, yeah. a, you know, but I think people I'm know honest, that man. already. That's in <laughs> oh, yeah, they hate me in Ohio. My hometown, that's the only fucking city in America that I can't do fucking stand up in any of the clubs because they all fucking hate me. Let's talk you know? about that too. Like, um, let's talk about why they hate you though. Well, Can we talk more about that. It's okay. Uh, sure. I, uh, I, I think I'm hated because I am, um, I'm very vocal about. Everything really. I mean, I, 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 I say what I feel and I've realized that you can't say that anymore, even though it's like freedom of speech is what we all live by as comics, but you can't rip people to shreds though, dude. No, I know. I know. <laughs> right. I, and I don't know what happened. Yeah. I don't know what happened with, with Wiley's. I can only say I've heard speculation that you got into an argument with an, another comic. I was, then, a, I was a drunk I was a drunk, um, and uh, a really bad drunk, and um, I went on stage one night, fucked up on whiskey and Adderall, and uh, and it was a Sunday night comic show, um, and I went over my time, and the chick fucking let me in the back, and I think I remember saying like something like, fucking, the light, you're giving me the light, I was doing comedy when you were in sixth grade, okay? You know, just everything that I hate about comedy came out in me that night. And I apologize. Um, so you, you basically, you were just on one. I was on a bender, yeah. And uh, it's, it's something I'm going to apologize for. I'll, I'll apologize now, but I'll, I'll do it in person when uh, I'm ready. But I'm not really ready to apologize because I think they have really fucking took it too hard i mean give me a break you know is it is it possible that you're meaner than you think sometimes though and you might you might i mean it oh totally possible i and, and that's, i don't mean to I'm not, i don't know exactly the whole situation but i'm just saying like i do that sometimes and my girlfriend like reminds me like sometimes i get mad at her for being mad at me <laughs> yeah. is it possible that that's going on I, and that is very possible and, that, and that's that's kind of what comedy is, is it, you have like a, a relationship with these clubs like you are dating yes you know you have to be cordial and uh and they get mad at all kinds of like personal shit and it's it's something that i'm not proud of but at the same time i'm i'm so um 
I'm just so, you know, stubborn is the word. I'm you a very stubborn person. and um, You think that's why it's taken you so long to, to apologize and to try to make amends? You just, why? I, I, I think that it, it's, it, uh, of course I, I think that, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I really, if I really needed it, you know, if I really needed to, to get the stage time and to get the, you know, the work and stuff like that, I would have already apologized, but I just don't fucking need it, man. Um, and most of my family has seen my show so many times and, you know, that I don't, they don't even fucking ask me when I'm playing next in town. So I go to other cities. Yeah. And do comedy. Yeah. You can still get booked out of town, no problem. Oh, you have yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a good it's, reputation. It's a, yeah, it's the, one, it's the one. It's the one city that I really can't do comedy in is my hometown, which is kind of sad, but... That's such a weird situation. It's so fucking stupid, That's and it's me weird. being stubborn. I, I'll eventually apologize, and I'm doing it now. I'll apologize, but I'll apologize in person. I'll go in. So you don't, and, feel, uh, you don't feel like you did a good thing, basically. You're saying, like, you know no, you I'm, fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I fucked up. It was my fault. Completely that's, my fault. You're very. That's a um, very mature thing to say. Seriously, dude. Like it's hard. You know, to, go bananas in Cincinnati. Sometimes. I apologize to them. Wiley's the funny bone. I mean, I, I snap. But at the same time, it's like. Do you think it's because your life was falling apart at that time? I think that's a lot to do with it. And you were back. I I, I, I you, took a lot of my personal problems out on these clubs, and you I think didn't you blamed to. it on the clubs and the people. Yeah, around well, you. I didn't blame it on the clubs, but I mean, I took it out on them. I took my personal um, depression and negative vibes. I took it out on people that I didn't need to take it out on, and I I do apologize for that. Yeah, because um, it's like everybody people who remember that, right? It's like. There's there's only so many people who stay around in the business, especially long term, because sure. we know this such a shit business. And it's like a small small percentage of those people stick around, and sometimes it's the people who were like the open micers at that time are now like kind of running the show or whatever. Ten years later, like the guy who's sweeping is probably going to be like the you know the guy who's the manager. So yeah, it's just like eventually. These things build up. And exactly. Like, the, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it can. Back, it's, I mean, you got to you got to watch what you say and watch what you do though. in this like, business. You never know yeah, yeah, if the I'm waitress saying. that you slept with years ago and never called back ends up being the fucking manager of a comedy club, and then you're fucked. I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's you know that didn't happen. Just let you know, like <laughs> that weird, didn't happen in Dayton, segue. Ohio. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying that whatever you got to watch. What you do, and what yes. you say, because it's this is a connected. lesson for other people in the business, right? Because it's already hard enough. We made this point earlier. It's already hard enough trying to do comedy nowadays. It's like one. It's like yeah. one more thing we have to kind of. I know. Watch. I'm out just for. being real with it's you, man. Corporate. I mean, it's, the, it's I, kind I, of corporate in a yeah. way. You, yeah, know, of, you kind of, of got to watch your p's and q's. Of course, and again, nothing uh, that I'm uh, that I'm proud of, but I. I have regrets, man. Yeah. Um, let's talk about before that, though. Like, let's not let's not take it down that road just yet. We still have like ten or fi- like ten or twelve minutes here. Let's kind of talk about like how you got to L.A. and like what was the what was the landscape of comedy like, and then how'd you kind of oh, pop okay. off out of Dayton um, and get to L.A. And then oh, this is a happy note. This yeah, is a happy this note. Is a good thing. I, um, this is uh, this will bring us back. <laughs> yeah. I I was on the road and I was making great money. And I was uh, who but I was driving around at nineteen ninety. Like before, what's that? before you were like kind of getting booked all the time. How did that happen? Like who did someone give you like a leg up? Like who do you kind of consider? Uh, there's there a, someone? there's a guy named John Chung, um, who used to manage Go Bananas in Cincinnati. He managed me, and I went. He he got me into a lot of festivals and a lot of uh, um, great work. Kind of, probably before that, I was actually ready to headline. I headlined. And uh, which ended up kind of biting me in the ass because you, know, you don't want to headline before you're ready to headline. I know. You know, you know, you don't want to murder. <laughs> I did not <laughs> until you're ready to murder. OK. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I 
I love that guy. He's, we actually have the same exact birthday, May 15th, 1973. Um, there, you know, it was like kind of a good friendship and, um, I wish him well. I, uh, he's, he's like in the Bay area in California right now in San Francisco, I think, um, raising a family and, uh, uh, I love that guy. Um, so he kind of got your start, though. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, through there, did. you built a name for yourself on the yes, circuits, and yes, you were yes. able to come back and yes. do your own thing. But I, I moved out to L.A. because I, I saved all this money. I was driving around in a 92 Saturn um, and uh, saved up about 20 grand. How long you know? does this take you driving, doing shows on the road? Uh, it took me about a year to save up 20 grand. Um, but that's working... Every you know, night. 50, 50 weeks a year everywhere yeah. and just, you know, cutting costs, like cooking in my hotel rooms with a George Foreman grill and, and <laughs> Robin. I, seriously, I did, I did all that. I, I, I really saved my money. I went to LA. I can see you just drying your socks yeah. off on the vent oh, with your yeah, George yeah. Foreman grill. Dude, it, Wonder Bread. <laughs> it was the best, man. It was the best. I mean, really, I, I'm a fucking camper, man. I, I know how to do it. Um, but I had all this money I, I saved up and went out to L.A. And, uh, and um, just did, you know, all the clubs in L.A., the, the Improv Comedy Store and, and Laugh Factory and all these, like, clubs. And I, I started getting recognition, you know. Um, funny thing is I moved into an apartment complex and... Uh, I got in the apartment at a really good deal because Daniel Tosh, Tosh.0, was a very good friend of mine. He's from Central Florida, or actually he's from Titusville, Florida. And, uh, but he started in Orlando, which, which is where I started doing comedy, really. I started in Ohio, but I moved down to Central Florida. Oh, so you lived in Florida before you moved to L.A.? Yeah, I really got a lot of my stage time and honed my skills as a comic in Orlando is the scene still good down there? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Florida's great. It's a lot of stage time. Um, and uh, Daniel Tosh was uh, my my very good friend, and um, he helped me out a lot when I started. And um, I uh, I had a I, I I mean I had a blast, man. Um, I had a lot of people help me and I try to help newer comics like you and, you know, and, and people that if I can help someone, I can, you know, I, I still know like a, a lot of people in the industry that, are, that can help you out, you know? Yeah. So, but that, that was, that's what was done for me. Yeah. So I want to, I want to kind of like pay it forward. Well, the real ones will lift other people up in any business. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, I uh, I got close, okay? I got very close to all these great things, you know? Um, and I never, I never, I never achieved it, you know? I wanted to start a family. I did. I met now my ex-wife in L.A. Um, I started a family, and uh, I chose family over fame, and I'm glad that I did that because I have two wonderful sons that are just the, the greatest thing. I mean, all the cool stuff I did in, in comedy, all the great times I've had, the Playboy Mansion, all these, all these like, you know, these things that people normally brag about. Yeah. I don't really care about now. I really don't. I, I care about my sons. And I, I think Los Angeles for all of that because if it wasn't for moving to LA, I wouldn't have never met my ex-wife. Yeah, and had these two kids, you know. So you basically had to like stop comedy and become a full-time father because of everything that happened. With yeah, yeah, she got she got arrested, and um, I have full legal custody of my my sons and. And uh, you had to quit which, going on the road pretty much, right? Because, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a good father. I mean, I'm an okay comic, but I'm a great father, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> that's, dude. That's really that really is my, my purpose in life, I think, is 
is uh, being a good dad. Yeah. And that's. I that's, think that's really cool, man. Like, there's not like you've seen you've seen it all. Like, and it's not you said at one point that you didn't really get your success. I mean, like I was saying earlier, man, like it's, it's never too late. Right. Randy Couture didn't have his first professional fight till he was 40 and he became a world champion. Yeah. So there's like Rodney Dangerfield also was a late bloomer. I mean, he's, you know, he, yeah, dude. He, he was in his 40s when he got famous. I mean, there's still time to like work out a new hour and film well, we'll a special, see. get it on YouTube and get get a get a, get it back on the road. We'll like, see. I just don't like being followed. <laughs> you know, don't fucking follow me. All right. You have to get followed. Tag dude. me, okay? You have to. I know. That's I don't want to tagged game, or dude. followed or fucking poked or whatever. <laughs> Just stop it. All right. Yeah. I know, but I, I got to get over that. I got to get over myself. You do, bro. Yeah. I really do have to get Let over myself, out, and I'm uh, I'm trying. I really am, man. I mean, this is uh this is something that um that is just an internal thing. I, I I've I've had a lot of personal problems and uh and hardships and everything for for the last seven eight years that i've overcome i you know if i can slept in a van in california while while i was dealing with all this legal shit that my ex-wife did and and uh it's really made me um very strong and uh i'm 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 happy for all the bad things that have happened to me yeah, dude. You know, I really am. Yeah. You're because a different person. It was too it was too easy when everything was was handed to me. Yeah. Cuz everything was handed to me. I mean, I You think you got success in fa- like too too fast? You think this Oh yeah. Thing? Oh, and early went, on I wasn't ready. Had. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. You know, I think I am now. Um and uh it just comes with age and experience, maturity. You know? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I really am uh ready, you know, to to Oh, you're, you you locked your kids in your in their room. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 I feel terrible too. No, right. that's hysterical. It's like the best part of the story. It was like the, I know, the PBS like, like heartfelt moment at the end. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Yeah, oh man, you. this is dude. This has I been a lot of fun. Fucking pit pit bull. Uh, you got a pit bull rescue dog. We yeah, she's huge too. I was like, please don't let her out, dude. That's gonna be yeah. The way. You're wearing sandals, dude. You you know what I mean? Get your toe bit off during this podcast. Oh, like, I know, no, it'd be it, terrible, dude. I would hate that. She's never <laughs> been dog. Anyone, your dog would but, die. If they ate one of my toes, because they're nasty. <laughs> dude, yeah, they're dude. fucking nasty. They, they've seen a lot of miles, dude. Those dogs. <laughs> yeah, Those so, dogs, dude. Uh, Hot no, dogs. Um, I, I had a lot of fun, man. I, this is, uh, Thank this you, has yeah, been dude. um This has been very re- rewarding for me. And uh, and I will just like to say, I love you, man. Dude. Um, you too, bro. You're my very good friend in comedy. And... Uh, I don't know how this is all going to pan out, this podcast, but edit it. It'll be sure. weird. It'll edit, be weird. Edit the fuck out of this. I mean, um, there's a couple of funny things in there that you can fucking yeah. use. But You're going to have to um, come back, dude, and do this again with me and talk more with me. But I hope that... For sure. I for sure. That, I, I absolutely will. I hope that all, all the goals that you have and everything that... Uh, that you want to do, dude, like works out for you. And, you know, I think that if you wanted stage time in Ohio again, like you said, you would just have to go to these places and, and, and gotta, just make amends, man. Like, I know. I got to fucking, I got a lot of, I'm not trying to push gotta, you into anything. I'm just yeah, saying yeah. like, you know, be, be a good guy. Why not? Fuck it. Try that. Right. <laughs> try. Well, I'll try. I'll, I'll do my best, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to leave you uh, on uh, a quote from the, uh, the great force Gump. I got to pee. <laughs> I got to pee too. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks, Kenny. You're the shit, bro.